Shalom fam, it's your sis, that biblical bay jelly be our yummy. And I'm back again because I want to speak on something, but you know me already. I'm going to take my own little tangent on it. So it might be not what you're thinking, might not speak to your ego, might bruise it a little, but here we go. Today, we are talking about destiny swapping, okay? I'm sure many people in the prophetic spiritual community have heard about destiny swapping. I thought this was a real thing once upon a time. Not saying that it's not, because it is, but I want to show it to you from a different perspective. A lot of us like to think about ourselves as victims, that somebody, this big bad narcissist, arrived on the scene with their tail and then they stabbed us with the pointy fork that they carry in their left hand because they never use the right hand because they never do anything right because they're just bad you know we like to say these things all the time but I want to give it to you from a different perspective all right so we're going to start here what is destiny swapping is it a real thing yeah it is it's that every single one of us from the time you are born, before you are born, is from your in your mother's womb. The Lord has a plan for you, a future and a hope. He knows each of us. The scriptures tell us this. I'm sure it's Jeremiah 29 verse 11 that tells us this, right? So we've all got a destiny, a planned and desired end from our creator. But that destiny can be switched and swapped with somebody else's. It arises from envy. And envy um, is not the same as jealousy. You see, the scriptures in Exodus 34 verses 14, it tells us that we should not worship any other God because the Lord Jesus Christ, whose name is Jesus Christ, well, he is jealous. He's a jealous God. His name is jealous and he's a jealous God, the most high, right? So being jealous is not the same as being envious. Um, when a person feels jealousy, it's based on something they already own. Okay. So for example, a husband could be jealous over his wife or a wife be jealous over her husband. Friends could be jealous over their friend getting a new friend because of course they don't own the friend, but they own the friendship that they have between each other. To feel jealous, it's something that you already have, that you feel threatened or fearful of losing. However, envy is different. It's actually wanting something that is not yours. That could be an attribute like somebody's personality, skills, gifts, whatever, or um, their possessions or even sounds crazy but the people like marriage or whatever anything else that they have in their lives is wanting something that you do not have that's envy whereas jealousy is oh I have this but I feel threatened I feel worried I feel insecure about this so now I feel jealous this is why God feels jealous over us because we are his creation you get me and this is why I love the bible so 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 much because I don't know about you but I used to watch those kind of oh she killed her this I can't remember what they're called but those they were American programs where like a woman or a man killed their uh boyfriend or girlfriend from jealousy over jealousy um because of maybe they cheated or they thought they cheated what's the name of that program if you know if those programs please comment I used to see them on YouTube and I think the channel was like CBS on Freeview or whatever, but I'm one of these weird people that I don't own a TV, I don't watch TV. I might get a TV in the near future. But anyway, I wanted to talk about this, Solomon, the Song of Solomon. Uh, I don't know if this is the Shulamite woman speaking while Solomon, but it says, Jealousy as jelly, jealousy is as cruel, cruel as the grave. And this is why we see these crimes of passion that are just all a kid. Like these crazy crimes because they are cruel as the grave. Well, not they are, but maybe we could say they are cruel as the grave. But jealousy, jealousy where it's something that you own and you feel jealous over it can cause people to do, drive people to do crazy things. And I just find it so cool when I see things written in the Bible that is like, I see that on my TV, you got me. 
So anywho, let's get back to the scriptures. Romans 12 verse 2 says, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing and perfect will. So this shows us there is a perfect will that the Lord has. Not just that, oh, we should follow the scriptures, but there is a perfect will he has for our life that in his design, because he is a designer and creator, he wanted you who he created with intricacies, quirks and uniqueness to do particular things, in a, to work in a particular way. Think of yourself as a mechanism that has particular hooks and nooks and crannies. Sounds funny, crannies, but okay. Imagine that's what the Lord created you as that, you know, if you push this there and you do this and you pull that strand of hair, this is how you work best. Hopefully not. Sounds strange again and I really need to stop it. Somebody help me, Lord. But yeah, there's a perfect will that the Lord has. Now, this is the scripture that perfectly articulates what it is to have a divine reversal that is not in your favor a destiny swap that produces death instead of life we were all born with the gift of eternal life in Jesus Christ having him as our lord and savior that means savior the one who saves us from our sin renews us, cleanses us through his blood, but is also our Lord, Lord meaning authority over us. I think it's so interesting how previously, biblically speaking, the wives would call their husbands Lord, and that's because their husband was their authority. So if you do not listen to the authority of Jesus Christ, meaning the word of God, because that's what he is. He is the, the flesh, the word made manifest. If you don't put the word of God above everything through the understanding of the Holy Spirit, of course, then he's not your Lord. Well, he might be your savior, but he ain't your Lord. I just got to tell the truth. But this is how we trade. And look at the word. It says wages. There's a transaction here. We trade our gift for death. Our gift of life and life and death are so powerful, those words. You know that scripture that says um, there's power in our mouths. It's life and death. We have power in uh, the tongue. Life and death is not just living and dying. People experience death by not achieving, fulfilling their destiny, i.e. maybe getting married. That is a form of death. If you do not fulfill your destiny in that what if the lord had a plan for you to be an entrepreneur or to have a certain career path but you don't fulfill that again that is death that is death to an area in your life that the, the most high already spoke life to when he first created you you see when we hear the words life and death it's easy to think that okay i'm alive i'm here i'm walking on the earth i'm alive and then when somebody dies there, you know, we have a funeral and that's what it means. It's easy to think that the power of our mouth is not something that transcends just biology. OK, when we hear the words life and death, we have to look at it spiritually. That it is so much more than our physical uh, self. It's spiritual that you could be a murderer just based on the words you speak. And that could even be the words you speak about yourself. Okay? Life and death is in the power of the tongue. And you are able to change your own destiny by the words you speak about yourself. Because life and death are in the power of the tongue. But we're going to speak about sin and how people, we, ourselves, we exchange our destiny. We collect our wages in death when we sin. When we choose to go against the gift of eternal life in Jesus Christ by following the word, we do it to ourselves, okay? So let's dig a bit deeper into this. Catch part two.